Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the home build. Today's a exciting day. We're gonna pour some concrete in the rain. So this is how you do it, pouring concrete in the rain. Of course, it's more expensive, takes more time, more prepare, uh, preparations, but you can do it. You can pour it in the rain. So let's go take a look at our pour, what we're gonna do. I got a uh, bunch of frames set up so I can drape plastic over right at the moment. It's not raining hopefully it can hold out and things will all be good uh, my patio out here is uh, it's all covered ready uh, and whatnot I didn't want to make mess around with with uh, prepping that right now the other thing is there's gonna be some hard trout bands of concrete going around and I don't want that rain dribbling on it the other areas the sidewalk so that there, I'm a little less concerned because it's exposed aggregate. I am concerned, depending on how hard it rains, but a light sprinkle uh, can be tough or it, it could be okay, uh, but a hard rain's not. So what I'm looking at to the west is I got blue sky over there, looking at my forecast. So, you know, concrete guys, they, they're constantly looking at the weather, the weather nuts. I almost know more about the weather than the weatherman or weather person but so we can pour concrete so here's our setup we got a screed pin uh, uh, a rod right there so we can rake the concrete uh, we're going to start with our step first okay pouring that and then we're going to move over here and start pouring that direction finishing that out coming over here i'll get a six foot two by four uh, i got an expansion board there that's partly for just uh, uh, having some, uh, something to float against and working my way that this direction. So, all right, let's go take a look at this. I got the concrete truck. I'm gonna be priming the pump. It looks like uh, about a five. What that means is how much the concrete actually will slump or drop. The wetter it is, the more fluid it is, the higher the slump, the stiffer it is, the lower the slump. What he just got through pouring in the end of the pipe is a, a slurry mix that helps the concrete to coat the, the tube, the hose that's going through, and that keeps the concrete from wanting to stick and it clogs up. Clogs are bad, they make a mess. So, and they're a pain. So, that's what he's got all hooked up. Uh, he's adding a little bit of water. If it was structural concrete, you know, you don't add the water just because you want to and make it a little runnier. It affects the strength of the concrete. So, this particular sidewalk's gonna be 3,500 PSI, which is 3,000 would probably work, but, you know, I like it a little bit stronger so it's going to be a little bit more cement this is uh also colored concrete it's going to be a light gray kind of a charcoal-ish type color Here you're going to see me tap the forms on the sides, the, e the edges. What I'm trying to do when I'm tapping it with my magnesium float is to get any air voids out of the edge and particularly against the face of the form. Later on I'm going to strip that and I don't want any air voids in it. 
also screeding it, uh, leveling it, floating it. Those are kind of other terms, but uh, make sure you're, you have a slight slope in the direction that you want so that water is not ponding. This area here, when we're dragging, it's notorious for uh, going low, does it? Some people use power screeds in situations like this to bring that cream up to the surface and help rot it as well. Here I don't do it because it's uh, exposed aggregate. If I was to vibrate it and bring in the, the cream up, it pushes the rock down and it affects the, the finish at the end. If this was all hard trout or broom finish, that's the option I would be going with. Since it's exposed aggregate, I want those rocks, the aggregates, to stay close to the surface as possible. What do you want to do? Thank 
He didn't say when. <laughs> On the way over here, I looked at my app. It said stopping in 48 minutes and resuming in 16 after that. I'm like, oh, that's getting pretty, pretty right accurate here. Is it break time yet? I promise beer. See, <laughs> I <didn't> promise beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, let's say I'd like to give you my card and go give it a solid burrito. So you okay with that, Vic? Yeah. You get too much for Marcel. Well, we he he keeps he keep one end on over the wood. Yeah. yeah. And then you and you float it so it doesn't go below the wood. You gotta be real, real careful with because that's where you're gonna be able to tell if there's any slight differences in elevation.
Here you can see us snapping lines into the wet concrete with a dry line, just like a string line. I already have the marks on the forms already placed so they know where to snap the lines. Having those lines in the concrete gives me a guide for using this joiner. Using a pole on a joiner like this allows you to reach out a little further. Also these two caps that are sticking up above the concrete here, those are clean out caps. Those are going to get taken off and replaced with flush caps. I just haven't. All right, so we got this pour turned up into being a twice the size of that I wanted it to be Boy, you gonna wanna... get concrete on Saturday. Are you going to want one snapped across that way too? Yep. Okay. To follow the, the sidewalk. Yeah. So what do you need me to do? You can get a mag float okay. and just where you can reach around the perimeter. The, the trowel lines, you're just making those go away okay. and uh, uh, kind of smoothing out any of these lines. Okay. And just back and forth, back and forth. The trowel lines from the, the edges? From, from the edges, and the, the joints, okay. and the whatever else. So since the pour got twice as big, the uh, joint's taking me longer, and plus I have a whole lot of joints over on the patio. Uh, starting to stiff up further more than I anticipated I wanted. But I guess you just work harder. So these joints are about, it's a four foot wide sidewalk. about four foot I did it all equal so I don't have some weird joint at the end um, so they're gonna be all equal and it worked out to be like four foot four or some kind of thing so So this pour over here, we just got through pouring as a, the truck was an hour and a half later. And uh, I tell you, if we didn't have as many people working on it as that we do, we could have probably lost it. Yeah. But we're going to be fine. One way or another. Just a little harder work to get it. But so like here, since this uh, concrete's a little wetter, I'm not going to push down as hard as the other side. The other side, I gotta really jam it in there. All right, so let me change and I'll move this one back. What these two guys are doing, move that one back and come in. They're snapping lines with the string line so that I'm not having to eyeball <laughs> where the joints are. So, Jack, when you guys get those all snapped, they're all done. That distance there, Whatever that is, we need another one across here. So it's probably four foot, it should be. Okay. You caught us just in time, because once I drop the string, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go with this one? Yeah. Since, it, since it's so, so wet, I uh, was going to, to the, Now it closes up the other side. That's okay. We'll come back and run it around. Uh, I'll turn this yeah. over there and then we'll do that. As it sets up some, we'll, we'll have to go back. Let's see. I'm going to be on this. I guess while well, you guys do that, I'm going to cut the thing. Four foot, four foot. You can just wherever you come to four foot. And well, then I'm gonna eat. You're gonna take me about two hours to eat that burrito. <laughs> I didn't get the 
Do you have to do a finish there, or is it? I don't know what. Do you have to get that. underneath it? So there's, there's another board there, then it's best. Yeah, that's I imagine he's going to strip this. Yeah, pretty soon, right? Here the concrete's really stiff and we're having to work that mag float on it to level out any of the little ridges from the joiner and then coming back following up with a steel trowel to smooth it out. Also I didn't get a video of me stripping the form on the steps but now is about the time when I climb out there uh, as soon as I get this section done uh, pull off the the two by six step for the step and then work that face to make sure there's no air voids it all looked pretty good and as well as the base of that form filling in and patching that before it gets too hard all right what a day <clears throat> we got our bands we got them broomed we have sugar water sprayed on the other areas and that step that, uh, that'll help us get that, that exposed aggregate look. Our sidewalk here is uh, being sprayed right at the moment. And uh, I'm using corn syrup for the first time. Crossing my fingers. I know sugar, sugar works, but uh, we're going to give this a try. And it's, it's a little set up right now so I want to and it's cold out right now it's about 50 oh 50 50 degrees 45 and uh, I'm I want to agitate it a little because it just set up some so I'm rooming it kind of getting some uh, sugar into the concrete a little more then we're gonna pressure wash it uh, later on, probably tomorrow morning. Well, we're back on day two, so we waited till the morning because you know yesterday was a high of about 50. We got all done, it's right around 45, so it's kind of cool. So it's gonna take longer for the concrete to cure. So after we poured sugar or sprayed sugar water on certain areas for the exposed aggregate, we uh, waited overnight and then we're back here in the morning pressure washing and 
holding the pressure washer quite a ways away, doing a little broom in it first. It's a wet broom it and pressure wash in it. And you don't really have to get too aggressive with it because just the broom alone takes away most of that cream. But it's turning out pretty good. There's a couple areas that, uh, you know, are not the prettiest. Um, but since we had such a big pour for us uh, and the tools and had to get on it right away because it's kind of getting hard on us and that sort of thing, uh, I'm happy with the results. Uh, you can kind of see the, the two foot bands going around it and the exposed aggregate uh, squares and the sidewalk going on around and as well as the front. It, uh, it's just going to be strictly that exposed aggregate. So even the step turned out all right. Uh, the corners still chipped looking uh, just because when we were finishing, it was really hard. And you, after you, you work it too much, when it's real hard, it starts breaking apart and it won't just won't stick together. Um, yeah, so turned out. Boy, I sure do like this look of exposed aggregate. See all this one step into the house, which is what I wanted. It all slopes away from the house. A little section here, you can slope it that way and then I have it sloping that way. So it's kind of two slopes, but still sloping a little slightly away from the house. I'll end up having to put a French train or something here or something or other, but either way, looks really good um, but this is what what it's like after we pressure washed um, it all looks real nice here's a final look at the back patio the two foot bands looks really really nice I'm very pleased with it everything has a eighth per foot slope almost not enough but when i put a cover over it, it's going to be just right so um if you go less than that you're very likely going to be ponding water and that sort of thing but it all turned out fairly well for the how fast the concrete was taken off for the amount of quantity and area for us uh if we had power screeds and other things it we could have probably handled more but we just don't have that so this isn't a our business that we do uh day in day out so i'm a carpenter i can do this and i've done this many times it's just not my honed in expertise every day type of thing but still looks good and uh, and everything hopefully you enjoyed it this portion and maybe learned something you can see our struggles that we had you know uh, sometimes you do struggle. Sometimes we, we are going to have to patch a few things. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, you know, I'm a perfectionist as a carpenter by trade. And, but I had to settle for certain things because it was getting hard so fast and I didn't have a crew that was knowledgeable and everything. So uh, they were all just kind of new. They're friends. So, and I'm very, very, very grateful they were here, by the way. So I couldn't have done this without them. Otherwise, I'd be paying a whole lot extra to have a contractor do this. So, section here, I will have to patch. That'll be later on. Not right now. That joint. Um, but, other than that, uh, a couple little spots I'll, I'll patch later. Um, but, 
other than that, we're pleased with it. And yeah, hopefully you learned something, hopefully you like it. And like always, stay safe out there. And I'll see you next time on the home build.